Well, hello. Hello. But what we thought we'd do right at the beginning, before we break into our new adventure, is say hello and do some shout outs to some people that we met whilst on our recent travels. We want to say a great big hi to Jim and Sam, Rachel, Jason, Bez and Bilbo. John, Natalie and Missy. Lee and Deborah. And the Pickerins. The <laughs> <laughs> so the last adventure we had guys was absolutely uh, tremendous. It was possibly up there with one of the best, just for our experience, not necessarily the locations we visit, although they were spectacular, but uh, it was just a real cracking adventure. Yeah. Um, and we needed it. Yeah, we did we, need it. We were due another adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we wanted to say hi to everybody and also a great big thank you for your support. We have reached our... 6,000. 6,000. 6,000 yeah. <laughs> so 6, subscribers. And you've supported us all the way, so from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So this, yeah, we've got a a new adventure on its way to you. Um, you'll meet a temporary member of the team. <laughs> <laughs> we need to set Claire's dad up with his own camper van. He wanted a camper van, so Tony built him a camper van and... Um, from a Mitsubishi Delica, and you will see some of this along with these adventures um, as my dad joined us for part of it. <laughs> so during that time, guys, the footage does get a bit choppy because yeah. um, we did want him to enjoy it. It wasn't about him being on YouTube, so we had to avoid uh, doing some of that filming. But in the same breath, there are some sneaky bits that I did manage to get and some bits of footage. So, uh, Ian, you're going to be... You're going to be a superstar, Dad. You're going to be famous. <laughs> Your time's come. Hollywood, watch out. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with this then? What's going on with this around my face? I don't know. It's just because I've been shaving for uh, years and I've just decided that I'm not going to for a few <laughs> weeks, to be fair. Um, yeah, it's a bit salt and pepper. you become rebellious. I've become rebellious, yeah. We'd just like to say a massive thank you to you all. And uh, we really hope that you like this next adventure. Yeah. afternoon. Hello. So we are on another adventure. And we're coming to you from somewhere a little bit different. Well for us anyway. <laughs> yeah because we don't live near the coast. <laughs> and we've never visited the coast. You can't see we're at the coast you just spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> So we're coming here, Robin Hood Bay. Everyone getting ready to uh, book and travel this summer? You find anything nice? Ah, rocks. I found some rocks. Big rocks. There's a bigger rocks. 
Oh, well, here we go again, guys. <laughs> 999, what's your emergency? <laughs> My wife. <laughs> So good afternoon folks. Hello. Uh, <laughs> and welcome back <laughs> to another adventure. We find ourselves on the east coast, northeast coast. Not of Scotland. Not of Scotland, no. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Well, we're middle way, halfway. Yeah. We're at Robin Hood's Bay. Yes we are. <laughs> <laughs> There's good at this. <laughs> never done this before <laughs> no we're all new to this <laughs> so yeah we're at Robin Hood's Bay a start of a, a fresh adventure so it's springtime I hear the songs above my head they are nearly faded every day so quite a famous uh, place, Robin Hood's Bay, and uh, Claire's going to tell you all about it. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Robin Hood's Bay is a beautiful old fishing village in the North York Moors National Park. It is a place that has many stories to tell. The Norwegians and Danes first came here before the year 1000 and had settled in the area, but after the Norman invasion in 1069, much of the area was laid to waste. By the 16th century, Robin Hood's Bay was a more strategically important port than the neighbouring and larger Whitby. The village consists of a maze of tiny streets and this invited smuggling. By the 18th century, smuggling was rife on the Yorkshire coast and vessels from the continent brought tea, gin, rum, brandy and tobacco onto the Yorkshire shores and much of this contraband passed through Robin Hood's Bay. So this is Robin Hood's Bay uh, Friendly Society's original banners and this one was um, working from 1800 to 1980 and this is what turned into insurance companies basically. Mm. And it was to help people in time of need. It was to buy men and families. They had fines, they had savings, they had various things and it went to people and families that were local in times of need. Friendly societies in Robin Hood's Bay. It expanded into modern insurance companies. So if you've not been here before guys, make sure you go and check out the Bay Museum. It's a uh, free entry, donations, and uh, the guy in there is absolutely terrific. 
and he will talk you through the history of Robin Hood's Bay as he is one of the last people that are truly from here. I think he moved out of here, was it 1963? Yeah. yeah. Well, he was here in 1963, sorry. The school closed and then the school got moved. But yeah, be sure to pop in there. It's a free museum, really interesting. So the, uh, a familiar story here at Robin Hood's Bay to our own Suffolk coast. Uh, it's suffering terribly from erosion. The cliffs are a little bit more steeper than there. Uh, than Suffolk. <gasps> Claire's just found some gold on the beach. Haven't you? I have. It's worth more than gold. What is it? Lollipop. <laughs> It's just about getting out in the fresh air. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's very cold today. It was uh, minus four this morning when we woke up and hit the road. It's just great being out. Absolutely magical. There is as much mystery surrounding the naming of Robin Hood's Bay as there is the man himself. However, an old English ballad and legend tells a story of Robin Hood encountering French pirates that surrendered their loot, of which Robin distributed amongst the poor of Bay Town, later to be called Robin Hood's Bay. Having navigated the maze of streets and alleyways, it was time to fill our bellies before heading toward our overnight park up. We've stopped for some fish and chips. What a start to a new adventure. Fish and chips. At Robin Hood's Bay. So a very quick uh, stop at Robin Hood's Bay. It's such a maze of houses and that, so it's uh, <laughs> really well worth a visit. Uh, the parking's at the top of the hill, so it's a, uh, I don't know, quarter of a mile walk down a hill. We've just come up the road a little bit. We want to go back to Whitby in the mornings, take a photo of Whitby. Hopefully the weather will be on our side, but just in case it isn't on our side, this is where we've parked Freddy for the night. There you go. So that's where we've, uh, Parked Freddy underneath the railway <laughs> bridge. So that's going to be quiet tonight. But yeah, this lovely little spot. Beggar's Bridge. Evidently, the story is that the river here was uh, flooded. It stopped two lovers from getting to each other. The story of Beggar's Bridge goes something like this There was a poor farmer's son and a rich man's daughter and they were in love but they weren't allowed to marry so the poor farmer's son Tom Beggar. Ferris Ferris Tom Ferris went off to sea to earn his fortune he got involved in scandalous behavior and came back a, a rich man <laughs> yeah. and had or came back a rich man married the love of his life and then built this bridge for 
future lovers so they wouldn't be parted by the river. The fact that you buggered off the to reason... be a pirate for five years <laughs> has got nothing to do with it. You come back and build a bridge and say, there you go, love. No, it was because they were separated. They couldn't say goodbye to each other oh. the night that he left because oh. they were separated by a flooded river. That's sad. Yes. But he still buggered off for five years to be a pirate. I think he was a pirate. <laughs> As usual, I put this location on the map. Uh, it's, I can't see no litter here. So, um, yeah, let's keep it that way. Well, good evening, folks. It's a quite uh, relaxing start to this adventure, but really it was mainly about the drive up today. So tomorrow, the plan is that we get up mega early because we're a few miles out from the Abbey and then we'll um, try and get there nice and early for sunrise and show you the Abbey at sunrise. Uh, we expect a lot of people there. It's quite a well-known and documented uh, photography place so um, we'll see how we get on. We are mostly relaxing we've just eaten a huge piece of cheesecake but it's nearly time for bed we've got an early start as Tony has said we want to be up ready for the sunrise so early start means early to bed. We'll see you at the start of the adventure in the morning. Good night. Good night. Oh, you should say